Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Folks, we just moved. We're setting up a new studio, so it's going to be kind of uh, bare bones like this for a little bit. Thank you for bearing with us, but still wanted to get uh, <clears throat> content out there. A great way to support the show is go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and submit articles and videos like Adam Kautz has done. Adam, thank you so much for supporting the show. What we're about to watch is a video of a pretty um, new kind of innovative, they're even calling it controversial way that we could reverse climate collapse. I talk about it a lot on this show. And one of the things I like doing is not just talk about the doom and gloom. There's pl plenty of information about that and it's valid and we should discuss it. We shouldn't bury our heads in the sand. But I also like finding solutions. I like, that's why I, I started doing the show with solutions, just sitting there yelling and screaming at people and blaming this and that and not doing solutions. Um, is I don't, that's just to me, I don't know. That's just chasing clicks. Like if I had millions of followers, I would be organizing boycotts and general strikes and stuff like that. I've got 73,000. I appreciate all of you. So we're going to do the best we can. But one of the things I like and why I call this the people's channel is all of you that watch this show you submit stuff to me and you can do this uh, through, there's a Patreon tier where you can submit articles and topics like this. And so I really wanted to bring this to your attention and thank you, Adam, again, for submitting this. So I'm going to show you this video by the scientists and it's pretty, it's pretty awesome and pretty innovative. And the thing I always say about a lot of these climate solutions, there's, there's already, there's plenty of solutions out there. We don't need to wait for some like crazy, you know, alien technology to show up to fix climate change. The solutions are out there. We just need to implement them on a, on a grand scale. And rather than send, you know, $120 billion to Ukraine and have a bipartisan war budget increase to now $858 billion. That's what was approved just last year for 2023, $858 billion. That's an atrocious amount. Imagine if we took some, some of that money and applied it to the solution that this scientist is gonna talk about. So I want you to watch this, here we go. They sent in the largest SWAT team assault in Canada's history to crush myself and six researchers looking through microscopes at plankton samples. That scares the living daylights out of most people. I'm Russ George and I'm considered a heretic because I want to restore the oceans and restore the climate of the planet and save the world and not make a whole bunch of money as the goal. Radicals, dissidents, rebels, and misfits. You can call them whatever you like, but what if they're right? My life these days is dedicated to restoring the health of the ocean to its historic levels of abundance. And we do that by treating the ocean as a series of ocean pastures, which is common sense on land. The process of restoring ocean plant life to its historic abundance is not my invention. A great scientist, John Martin, pointed out in 1988, if you take a tiny bit of mineral dust back to the ocean, that will help the plankton bloom and can allow the oceans to remove the vast majority of humanity's carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. That's a few hundred thousand tons of iron ore rock dust. Well, Australia sells to China every year 600 million tons of iron ore rock dust. So if we wanted to restore the world's oceans to health and save the world from climate change, we merely need to deploy a team of people with brooms and dust pants to sweep up the dust around the great iron ore shipping ports in Australia. If we use the ocean and the sun to power photosynthesis, we can mitigate climate change. And it won't take decades to do that. It will take mere years. Instead of costing trillions of dollars, it will merely cost millions of dollars. Ocean pasture restoration has the capacity. I'm sorry. Did you just hear what he said? Did you, did you just, did you just hear what he said? Literally, we take iron ore dust. From these ports where they're, where they're mined and shipped in Australia and just people with dustpans and spread them in the ocean. And it'll take millions of dollars, not trillions of dollars. First of all, let me just make this point, not to undermine anything the scientists are saying. Even if it did take trillions, we have the money to do that. We just gave trillions of dollars in stimulus money over the last couple of years that mainly went to Wall Street people. Some regular citizens like you and I got it, 
But let's be honest, it mainly went to Wall Street bailouts and 100 new billionaires were created in the single greatest upward transference of net wealth. Not to mention wasting $3.5 trillion on a 20-year war in Afghanistan where four presidents from both political parties replaced the Taliban with the Taliban, only now the Taliban has $80 billion in American weaponry. So there's a couple trillion dollars we could have spent. Then there's the $1.5 trillion wasted on just researching and developing the F-35, a fighter, bomber, whatever jet that we don't need. So I just want to make it clear, even if it did cost trillions, we could, we do have the money to do it. But this guy's saying millions for tens of millions of dollars, which to the American, to the United States budget, that's nothing. Again, we just spent... $858 billion that was just approved. That will be a military war budget for 2023, $858 billion. So we took, you know, a hundred million dollars out of that budget. It sounds like we can do what this guy is proposing. <laughs> I, just, I just want to point that out in a dollars and cents thing, what he's talking about. And that's why these ideas, oh, is it that possible? Is it that crazy? Yes, they're simple ideas that just need to be implemented. Need to pull 30 to 35 billion tons of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere every year and repurpose it into new ocean life. Humanity only emits 45 billion tons. So that's three quarters of the burden of the fossil fuel age. The knee-jerk reaction that many people have about humans putting anything in the ocean is often completely out of context. When the dust blows out of the Sahara Desert and blows towards the Amazon, 700 million tons a year of African dust lands in the Amazon basin, and it provides minerals and nutrients that allow the Amazon rainforest to grow. On the way to the Amazon, more dust than that lands in the ocean. In 2012, with a small native Indian village in British Columbia, we took our dust out to their ocean pasture we sprinkled the dust over 10,000 square kilometers. The plankton grew into a 50,000 square kilometer bloom. All of ocean life came to the bloom and feasted. That project took probably a half a billion tons of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and repurposed it into that ocean life. And the measure of success was intending to bring the fish back. Well, the very next year, the pink salmon that we targeted in Alaska, they were expecting to catch 50 million pink salmon, which was going to be a very healthy catch. But following our pasture restoration, the Alaskans had to stop fishing after catching 225 million salmon, which was the largest catch of salmon in all of history. It just works, right? There's no question about it. It simply works. So if what you're saying is, is accurate, it doesn't cost trillions, it costs millions. Well, there's people out there with millions. There's people with millions to burn. Like, I've seen what Nick Cage spends his money on. <laughs> well, they don't because of the attacks that have taken place on the people who have worked in this. So when John Martin in 1988 said he had the solution for climate change, he was declared a heretic because the solution was too good, too fast, too easy. So the people today who expect to be spending those trillions of dollars. This is the worst news ever. So when I did the work with my village of 800 native people in British Columbia, we thought nothing could be better. We dotted every I, crossed every T. And then the week before Easter in 2013, there was a pounding bang on our research office and laboratory in Vancouver. And in burst an 11-man Canadian government SWAT team with body armor and automatic weapons. Even though the government of Canada was our full formal contractual partner in the project, they decided to raid the office and destroy the data collections and our ability to complete the science. So I was declared a rogue American oligarch who swindled the poor hapless natives into doing this illegal activity. When there's an example of what happens to a heretic, nobody wants to repeat that. In the last, say, 50 to 70 years, we've horrifically destroyed half of all ocean life. And so we have to restore it. It's a life or death situation. Ocean pasture restoration is about becoming good shepherds of the oceans. We need every invention that has ever been invented to tend to the land. 
in the agricultural sense as a good shepherd recreated to tend to the 72 percent of this planet that is ocean you take care of mother nature she takes care of you uh my name is russ george r-u-s-s g-e-o-r-g-e -E. great perfect and you can remember that because i work with rust <laughs> iron okay so. well isn't that amazing also not shocking that a government like Canada, which we've done videos on how Justin Trudeau was flown down to Texas to ensure the oil companies, American and Canadian oil companies, that he would drill all through all of the oil that's under Canadian soil. So it's not um, shocking that Justin Trudeau's neoliberal government um, would send cops, SWAT team, to seize the research of this. So I know I have uh, fans in Australia that watch this show. Spread this word in Australia, because it sounds like you just elected um, your, uh, you just knocked out the conservative government, and now you've got more of a, a left-leaning government. And it sounds like there's a, there's a big um, groundswell to, to pressure to get Julian Assange freed, and it might even happen, which is amazing. I don't want to, I don't want to, I want it to happen, I don't want to get my hopes too high. But the point is, if you voted out conservatives in Australia, then this is another thing. Then keep going. So since this is a, a majority of where the iron ore is and the dust is. So this is the kind of stuff that gives me hope. Again, thank you, Adam Kautz, for sending this to us via patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. And this is why... I think I've got some I've got a, I've got some hope out there. So this is a good solution. This is a this is made by smart scientists and again they scientists only react with the data. If this didn't work the scientists would have gone back to the drawing board. He wouldn't be doing this. But the data is the data. And obviously his data and this science and this research is a threat to somebody that wants to make a bunch of money off of fossil fuels or whatever, or they think this is a threat to, I don't know what, the iron ore business or, or they just have, want to spend $1.4 trillion on green energy. Maybe that's it. And they're like, oh, they own a bunch of solar stock. And I'm a, I'm a big proponent of solar panels, but this is an even better solution because to make solar panels, we have to mine all of these resources to make the solar panels. This we're literally taking dust from already from existing iron mines. So we don't have to do any new drilling just to continue the iron ore and put that dust in, and this changes things. And then again, he makes a great example of the dust from the Sahara and Africa floating into the Amazon rainforest and how it's actually a part of it. Like this, it's it helps the ecosystem of the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. Thank you guys. It's why it's a people's channel. You guys send me great information that I can then share to a bigger audience. And especially if you're in Australia, get loud about this because there's a solution right there on your shores that would help the whole planet. Follow the money, connect the dots and get the truth. That's how you make Gotham great again. And that's why you all need to shave your muckles for justice. Hey everybody. Thanks for watching. We are still in our like ninth month of demonetization from YouTube. So support what we're doing at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, which is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. It's free to sign up and there's a premium level at $10 a month. And for that, you get everybody on the platform's premium content. Myself, Lee Camp, Ron Placone, Jimmy Dore, Whitney Webb, Kim Iverson, Abby Martin, and many, many others. You can also support what we're doing at Venmo at Graham Elwood and go to GrahamElwood.com. We have a PayPal button and a PO box. I also have crypto wallets, which are all in the show notes. Thanks for supporting what we do.